Hi, welcome back to my channel and welcome to the mess that is this house. I just filled up everything and I put in a lot of things that my brother and his girlfriend want to get from me and I'm going to drive to the house and then I'm going to go on a three week trip to just feel how, how everything feels. Can I cook? Can I work with everything? Do I need to change? Like what needs changing just to get a feeling for how it is to live in this van. So let's go on a first trip. It's officially mine. first night in really cheers Whew. this is simple wine I'm not used to drinking stuff anywho I am probably going to watch survivor and fall asleep I haven't been reading at all over the past couple of days it's just it's all too exciting but I do read Oathbringer and I want to I want to continue reading, like I need to catch up. So look at my beautiful light. This is bright. This is really cool for reading. Maybe I'm going to get a few moments in the morning, but it's 2 a.m. It's been a long day and I'm just tired. Been to the garage, checked, them, checked Billy out. Everything's fine overall. A few things to do, but nothing nothing concerning everything was to expected friends both <laughs> the friend that i wanted to meet today and the friend that i'm going to meet on saturday both canceled on me um, due to like quarantine and stuff so i'm just going to take my time and going to try and find a few beautiful spots to hike it's going to be freezing tonight like literally freezing i've seen reports saying that it's going to freeze overnight and so this is going to be interesting I am weirdly nervous. I'm so used to sleeping in my tiny car with windows all around. Um, and it takes me literally like two seconds to set it up. This took me, what, five to ten minutes. Also, I feel like I have less control because I don't see to the side. And I park on a big parking lot. Not the most beautiful view or anything, but it feels very safe. And for my first night, that's what I need. But I parked in the back with the windows to the woods. And now the whole parking lot is to this side. So seeing my brother excited about all the things that we can do and change and upgrade in here was golden though. Okay, I'm so tired. Let's, let's watch Survivor and go to bed. Good night. I think around 8 a.m. I felt it was freezing for a while, but I wasn't freezing. Like it, the air was really cold um, and I had to stay under my, my blanket, but that was okay. It was a nice one. Uh, some of you might already know that I named this van after three people in my life or well <laughs> in my life is not really the right word but three people that have a meaning for me and that I want as guardians over my journeys and the cool thing is I actually found three bookish pillows that represent all three of them 
So the first one is William the Bloody, aka Spike from Buffy, which you might know I'm a little obsessed with. And he is there to help me be bold and brave and make bold decisions, follow my heart, follow my gut. And the heart is all fire, represents Spike. The second person is William Shakespeare, who is going to be there to guide me to push boundaries, but be smart about it. This one, the head is too wise, represents William Shakespeare. And then the last one is my dad, whose second name is Willy. My father is on my journey to guide me to always stay safe and have an adventure, but <laughs> stay safe. And this one, uh, represents that I'd rather die on an adventure than live standing still. I know it's a little bit saying that in a different, completely like op in, in an opposite way, but I still feel like this represents the safety aspect. <laughs> It's been a really wonderful morning so far. So let's drive to a post office to drop off some mail and then to a hiking parking lot where I want to take a hike. I'm doing my break today and then first get a little bit of work done. Can somebody explain to me why I am so anxious that the van won't start? There's literally no reason for it. Every mechanic that I spoke to said he, he's in great condition. There are a few things that need to get done, but they will not stop this van from driving so there he is <clears throat> all right let's go yeah i'm feeling anxious baby i know but i can't hold it now my baby i don't want to know who the enemy the more it's on my life Trip to a hardware store. I feel like that's a must. <laughs> Let's get some gas out for the cooker. I'll travel to the moon. It's you. that this is a McDonald's with this like lounge area I don't know if you can hear the music playing but yeah it's like palm trees uh, my hair needs washing uh, which I'm trying to reduce to someone around like once or twice a week but yeah so we're at my stop uh, let's go get a shower. So the shower in Luxembourg was definitely cleaner, but I had 30 minutes with unlimited water here. Whilst in Luxembourg, I think I had six minutes of just the shower going and going and going. And with like conditioning, shampooing several times, etc., it just got a little bit stressed at work. I was amazed how little time I actually need. Uh, being freshly showered is an amazing feeling. I am a little bit like, damn, I don't know what's the right word when your skin isn't completely dried off. But that's okay, that's okay. I still feel good. Uh, I just need to get into fresh clothes. I'm looking forward to that. So let's, should we stay here for just a little bit and chillax in my bed? Get warm and cozy. Every time this opens up, it makes me happy. And my fridge is running, by the by. Good morning on day two. I I slept so well. I mean, I didn't sleep like a log like I usually do. I feel really, really rested, which I uh, 
have been missing for a while. So we are parked at a hiking parking lot. Ugh. It is raining, but let's see. Maybe, maybe we'll go out later. This is kind of what I envision this life to be. After starting to post a couple of things around me getting a van and wanting to travel, I started asking, do I have a plan? Where do I want to go? And my answer is, I'm just gonna go where I'm gonna go. It's no schedule. And today is the best example of what that means. I found it in the Pretty much everyone uses to find a parking spot for the night. And I know that a lot of people are frowning upon it, but I oftentimes find it reliable uh, when I don't have time to search for my own place. So when I woke up, I saw that this is actually a parking lot for a tourist attraction, and I'm now on this little cutesy train that is going to do a tour across the um, swamp and with a tour across the swamp and I'm exploring an area that I probably would have passed on and um, there's like this little tourist map with hints around like other locations of swamps and nice views and everything. I totally would have passed this and not seen this if I would have just looked at it and not having a schedule just allows me to think about hey I'm just gonna stay in this area and explore the other swamps or not depending on what I feel like so that's literally what it means to not have a flat that is made for kids absolutely did i enjoy myself absolutely i learned something about something that i never knew that i wanted to learn something about and it was amazing let's go to like a warm place and do some editing maybe maybe let's go to ikea i didn't have as much luck with a wi-fi here and oh i do need to do some shopping so i can cook maybe let's try and cook inside it's freezing Let's try and cook inside for once. For once. <laughs> for the first time. Throw our problems in the flame. Okay, so <laughs> we made coffee inside. We cooked a dinner outside. Um, it's freezing and ultimately I'm going to be in bad weather a lot. So we need to check if this is easy to cook inside. The tile counter is heat proof, so 
it shouldn't be a problem to have this stove on here i'm gonna open the door in a little bit which potentially is not something that i always can do but i don't have a roof fan or anything and it's a little bit i don't have a problem with like the small one but i'm still a little bit scared with a bigger propane gas tank being open and cooking without a door open i did buy quite a few things a fresh veg and everything but i need something quick and convenient it's already going on to five o'clock and i haven't eaten anything aside from a small piece of bread today so i need lunch and i'm hungry i was contemplating making my kimchi ramen that i love that could test this out or i have gotten some like ready-made soup just to heat up for convenience sake and i think i'm gonna use this or this soup because they are big in terms of storage and my kimchi and my ramen are in the very back actually i don't know where i put my kimchi yeah this is the type of stuff that i still need to figure out and once i know where everything is it's going to be so much easier but i guess let's just make a soup <laughs> I spent a whopping four hours in this McDonald's editing, but at least the first video of my non bookish content is done. Oh, let's get going. Kind of place to stay for the night. I'm freezing. They have the um, AC on and it's cold. I don't want to get up and outside. It's way and way. It's a lot of people from outside of Europe often ask me, hey, um, isn't it totally gross to work at McDonald's? Because I've been talking a lot about enjoying my time at McDonald's. And tell me, you really think that this here is a growth? place to work so we are on the what? <laughs> and we have the first car travel when I left the McDonald's I started hearing some weird clicking sounds but I can't see anything under the car. I can't see anything wrong in the motor or anything. So I'm wondering, was wondering if it's the brakes because the brakes need repairs anyways. Then I tried backing out of the parking thingy and something was stuck. Like I cannot reverse the car. And when I put on the gas, like when I, when I put my foot down on the gas, went in reverse it started like like I don't know how to describe it but it got stuck and then it sounded like it was trying to break a barrier it sounds like something's on the floor but there's nothing and I can't okay I need to find a garage close to this like really close to this and the closest I could find is like 25 minutes from here let's see I'm wondering if I should um, call AAA. Um, I mean, I do have that for a reason. Maybe they can tell me if I can actually drive to the next repair shop. 90 minutes. 90 minutes. Uh, it can take up to 90 minutes. So let's use that time and do some stuff. So they obviously, um, they can, you know, for sure, without opening it up. And um, it's pretty obviously the brakes, um, as I suspected. But checking that my insurance is going to tow me there, and then let's go. I 
I had only been on the road for 300 miles on my third day in the van when a weird sound made me stop and call the AAA. It sounded like something metallic was dragging on the road, but I couldn't see anything on, on the floor. The AAA confirmed my suspicion that something was wrong with the brakes and continuing to drive would be too much of a risk, so they told me to the nearest US car workshop. It was a Sunday evening and I totally expected that I would have to sleep outside in an industrial area in a parking lot. Um, I was ready for that, but no, <laughs> Ingo was home. Now, normally a situation like this would totally stress me out, but for some weird reason, I didn't even feel the slightest bit anxious or stressed for a single moment. Sure, this was probably going to be a costly repair and it definitely disrupted my tour, but the brakes were on the list to fix anyways and I had set aside some money for specifically this repair. Even if it would get a little bit more expensive, it would be completely unplanned. I was also already excited for some unexpected connections and in a way, maybe an adventure. A while ago, I had decided for myself to always, always find something good in every single situation because if you look, you will find one everywhere. I promise. And there was something good in this one too. I had the incredible chance to meet Ingo, the owner of the auto repair shop. Ingo is probably one of the most kind-hearted, open-hearted people. He opened up his home to me on a Sunday evening. He invited me in for a drink and he was just so warm and it was just such an incredible experience. And since we ended up having to wait for parts, I joined Ingo on a trip to bring back an old Cadillac from a holiday destination. <laughs> that totally was an adventure of its own. I actually ended up staying almost a week and in between working on the van, we got to connect and chat a lot. I ended up staying for a week because, well, that's just the reality. Sometimes we have to wait for parts and I barged into this auto repair shop that had other stuff scheduled. So I couldn't expect for this to just be done in half a day. It took a little bit longer than expected, but my time there, I will never forget. In my normal life, I would have never engaged with somebody like him. Somebody who very obviously has very different beliefs and thoughts than I do. His life, you could say is in a different social media bubble and I am pretty sure our realities could not be further apart. When people are not open to the other side of arguments, it just gets tiring when you just get things repeated that where, you, where you're like, okay, this person isn't thinking for themselves, they're just repeating arguments that you can't discuss. But it was different with Ingo. Aside from my broken down van in the yard making me engage with him, it was really interesting. I am so appreciative to get the chance to engage with somebody who has different ideas and thoughts and actually is open to truly listen and think about arguments, just like I am. And this is not a one-way street. I listened to his arguments, I listened to his thoughts and his sources and, and everything and we ended up discussing it and I love how none of us had to feel like they had to be different to engage with the other person and we both found it interesting to hear what the other person had to say. We ended up discussing matters outside of our bubble, which might not have changed my overall viewpoint, but it has added so much perspective. It totally changed my understanding of where he and others like him come from and why they do what they do and why they think what they think. And isn't this ultimately why we travel and, and what we're hoping to, to gain from a lifestyle like the one that I'm trying to live. All right, dinner is cooked. Let's go live for some reading sprints. Do some sprinting tonight. And we're live, yay! It's so good to be back online. opinion number <laughs> I think four um, 
Opel Sellers garage, my garage before I bought him, the garage after I bought him, number one, <laughs> that concentrates on old timers, and then the one where I was stranded, and now this one, which is a Ford partner, like an official US parts partner, whatever, fourth opinion, and he started out in a way that I was like, oh damn, what have I gotten myself into? Because he was tearing this thing apart. It sounded like I'm gonna have to invest like 6,000 and like immediately and then his like demeanor started changing and he was talking about well this like that he pretty much said there's a lot of small things that need to be done nothing critical and just all of the things that he listed um, if I bring it into a garage, it will probably cost me five to six thousand, but none of it is critical. But all of these things might be criticized before getting the next approval from the system that we have in Germany, where we have this like state like thing that checks the car and only if it's completely safe and has everything that passes the regulation. It sounded like a few of these items were in a, in a way that if I don't deal with them, they get worse, but none of it is critical. And, and and the safety issue. And then he started talking about do it yourself. If you have somebody who knows how to deal with metal and this kind of stuff. And he pretty much more and more was talking about do it yourself. Like um, it's all small things. It'll probably cost you like 20 bucks and um, it'll cost you a lot when you bring it into an auto repair shop. It didn't sound as bad as it anymore at all. <laughs> After he understood that I was preparing to live in this thing, he was like, oh yeah, then you plan to put a little money instead of if into rent into this car then oh yeah it sounded good it sounded good now let's find a place to work Hello, my office for the day city parking lot grabbing fresh clothes is still a hassle i'm not gonna have a coffee or anything this morning i'm just gonna grab my things and get into the city i'm 10 minutes with an e-bike or like a scooter away from the office so that's my plan it's freezing here but let's get a ticket so this parking lot seemed safe and relatively cheap i'm paying five euros for a full day wouldn't it would not be any cheaper absolutely normal city parking lot i'm scared to leave willy alone for the first time so i do want to do the scooter thingy but at the same time I have to get some coffee. So I was looking for a Starbucks. Haven't had Starbucks in a while. I also need to send some stuff to my, my bus in the UK. And I mapped it out. It's like eight minute walk, eight minute walk, eight minute walk. It's not really worth it getting a scooter thingy. Maybe, well, maybe on my way back. All right, let's double check that I'm going the right way. <laughs> past 9 p.m. work is done for the day and yes I wanted to use a scooter but I feel like my knees need some walking and also I just after sitting in the office all day I just feel like walking also it's starting to be Christmassy and all the lights in the city are, are on so it feels kind of nice to just slow down a little and just walk a little bit. experience it all let's see if um the christmas market is already open um by the amount of people coming from that direction it feels like something might be open
Yes, way too late. Um, everything's pretty much closed. It's just that a lot of people still are there who have still something in the glass. They're just still being there, chatting and everything um, while everything is already closed up. So, got myself some pizza. It's actually a small pizza, but it looks large on this viewfinder. Getting close to the parking lot. I'm actually on the parking lot. Why am I so nervous that it really is gone? It's not rational. I've never been that nervous with more expensive cars. I can see him. I can see him. I can see him. Oh my God. That's so much better right now. Yes. I stayed in the same freaking parking lot because I felt safe here. And I was too lazy last night. I had a warm pizza. I wanted to curl up, watch a movie and <laughs> go to sleep. So today before work is laundry day. reality I just I wanted to drive as far as possible towards Frankfurt but I did grab myself a quick dinner on the way and just wanted to stop here to eat and maybe watch a movie and then I fell asleep during the movie and well half asleep and then I decided oh well, let's just stay here Come with me, get your mind, So interesting how um, good the lighting is right now compared to on camera on my laptop. It's November 30th, sprinting with Melanie, waiting to open up my door number one of my advent calendar. 30 more minutes until I can and that's probably going to be the end of my little trip. I have a new shell, I have a hammock seat. It's comfy. I have everything that I need. I, I tried cooking. I tried everything. I'm good. I have my list of things that need changing. Lights is one thing. They're cute, but they're not light enough. Cool. So let's use the last few moments in my bed to dive back into Oathbringer, try and finish this, and then go back home for now. Guess what? This morning, this last morning of my first trip in Vili, it happened. It happened. He didn't start. Well, he did start and then I tried to back out because I was parked in. I had to back out and whenever I put Vili in reverse, the wheel would, like, I was turned and then the wheel would snap back and the engine would just stop. I have this very, very uneasy feeling right now um, having to have it checked out. I'm probably gonna ask on like a 40 corner line, 
community forum or something um, before I bring Billy into a garage. Tell me, have you have you made a big purchase like this? Have you bought a house or something? And did you did you have this like cold feet kind of type feeling shortly after as well? Um, please please sh please share with me and please help me calm my mind. So. Yeah, I'm picking up my son now, driving back home, and this is it for the first trip. The first three, three and a half weeks in Billy, and I'm I'm excited for the future. I'm excited. I'm excited for what's to come. Can we stay here forever? I'm loving this moment. Can we stay here? I could stop the time, don't you know that I would? Cause I'm just loving this moment. Can we stay here forever?